Welcome, welcome to Prayer Watch Tent. I appreciate you joining me on this live broadcast on YouTube. Call your friends, call your loved ones, and inform them Pastor Alo is live on YouTube. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you. For such a time like this, I should present your soul, ourselves before your presence. Lord, lead us through, God, in Jesus' name we pray, thanksgiving. Amen, amen. Today I want us to look at the responsibility of a manager or a steward, which I believe is very, very important. Um, as we all know, Psalm 24 verse 1 and 2 tells that the world and all that within belongs to the Lord. But today as a manager, I want you and I to realize that I have a divine responsibility. If God is the owner, then I am the manager whom he has entrusted with his property. I must learn to think, therefore, like his manager. A manager oversees the owner's assets for the owner's benefit. A manager carries no sense of entitlement to the assets he or she manages. The job of a manager is to find out what the owner wants done with his assets and then to carry out his will. This understanding affects how we give and that is why the Bible is us has to give abundantly. King David, then the most powerful man on earth, understood this owner-manager relationship. And so after receiving a tremendous offering, David responded to God, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this, for everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your own hand. First Chronicles 29, 14. So David was thinking like a steward, a manager, not an owner. And this reminds me of how Jerry Carvin had a successful restaurant chain, two banks and a ranch, a farm, and real estate ventures at 59, Jerry was searching for a nice lakeside time in town. But the Lord, his owner, had other plans. God led us to put our money and time overseas. Jerry said, It's been exciting. Before we give token amount, now we put substantial money into mission. We often go to India. When asked what changed the Calvin's attitude towards giving, the answer came quickly. Once we understood that we were giving away God's money to do God's work, we discovered a peace and a joy we never had back when we thought it was our money. And secondly, the Bible also results us to give sacrificially. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul tells of the Macedonian Christians and their sacrificial giving. Paul testified here of the Macedonian believers by saying that we want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God granted to the churches of Macedonia during a severe test by affliction. The abundance of joy and their deep poverty were flowed into the wealth of their generosity. I testify that on other own, according to their ability and beyond the ability, they begged us instantly for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints and not just as we had hoped. Instead, they gave themselves especially to the Lord, then to us by God's word. Second Corinthians 8, 1 to 5. Beloved, how could they give so generously while in extreme poverty? They didn't see poverty as an, ex an exemption from giving. They simply refused to miss out on the satisfaction of giving sacrificial. 
then thirdly, the Bible exhorts us to give joyfully. Have you ever wondered why the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver? Second Corinthians 9, 7. Joyfully. Giving is a sign that the givers understand the owner manager relationship. Cheerful giving can only come from a heart certain things above, not an earthly things, as Colossians 3 1 tells us. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So God loves a cheerful giver because said givers are investing in heaven, which reaps eternal dividends. When the tabernacle was being built in the Old Testament, people got so caught up in the joy of their heavenly investment that they had to be restrained from giving more. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work for the sanctuary came one by one from the work they were doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than is needed for the construction of the work. The Lord commanded to be done. After Moses gave an order, they sent a proclamation throughout their camp. Let no man or woman make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So, so uh, the people stopped. The materials were sufficient for them to do all the work. There was more than enough. Exodus 36, 4 to 7. Moses basically had to get up and crowd. Enough already. We give because everything is God's to begin with. The scripture teaches, both by mandate and model, that we are to give abundantly, joyfully, and sacrificially. Beloved, I want you to understand this key that you need to give sacrificially. May God bless you for being a good steward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hope to see you again and bye for now.